Good morning, everyone. I am Todd Obert, President and CEO of Productive Corporation. Joined here alongside me virtually, technically, uh, recovery managemently, Mr. <laughs> Pete Greco, <laughs> VP of Sales and Technology. Today, uh, guess what? Sit back. Uh, load up your coffee because we're going to blow you off your chair with this simplicity that we're going to talk about in the Arc Serve appliance. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, you're going to like it, and uh, it's all of Arc Serve's uh, very cool new UDP technology wrapped into an appliance. Mr. Pete Greco is going to demo that for you. We're going to talk about uh, some of the features within. UDP and some things to consider whether uh, you look for software or an appliance. Uh, for some it makes a ton of sense, for others traditional software is still the way to go. So if you have been to our events in the past, you know that we are all about technology and less about fluff. To that end, we will meet Productive in one minute. Uh, we will go over the new features in UDP contrast appliance V software and then take a look at the actual appliance not just a picture but the interface itself I think uh, you know imagine a uh, you know one U box that is uh, you know very cool that's the appliance so give that a visual then we will actually show you the working interface if you have a question please utilize the chat feature we have 30 minutes or less so buckle up and we are ready to giddy up. All right, let's do this thing. Who is Productive Corporation? Well, Productive is a security and storage software expert for mid-sized companies. We have dedicated account execs that have tons of knowledge, can put you in touch with technical resources, and can help you license and deploy the technology you purchase. We implement, test, and optimize the products that we sell. Everything from security assessments to penetration tests to UTM implementation optimization, uh, we can help you with storage management and also uh, other services around utilizing your environment more effectively. We also produce tons of third-party content that talk about the mid-market, talk about solutions that you may be amenable to, talk about current issues, all of this can be found at ProductiveCorp.com backslash content, as well as our YouTube channel. The bottom line is we have the resources to help you. Help at ProductiveCorp.com, 800-726-4099, whether it's implementation, assessment, licensing, or optimization services, we are here to help. Uh, today we have Mr. Pete Greco who I mentioned at the top of the hour, is our VP of Sales and Technology. Um, he has been deploying and helping people with technology deployment for over a decade and uh, has recently been playing with the new ArcServe UDP appliance. So I would like him to tell you about it, show you it, and uh, please feel free to ask him any questions you have about ArcServe UDP. In the meantime, let's give a warm virtual round of applause for Mr. Pete Greco. Pete? All right. Thanks so much. Please, uh, everybody, stay seated. Uh, we'll get this show underway uh, uh, right now. So, uh, Todd, yeah, let's take a look at the at the first slide here. Um, so this is what we're going to be uh, showing everybody today and, and talking about at a, at a high level uh, is the, the unified management uh, console. I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing. Uh, with deduplication and the, the results that we're getting um, on the on the appliance, um, we're a Hyper-V shop here. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, how I'm backing up uh, uh, two of my hosts: uh, one using the the agentless method, and and one using uh, more of a traditional uh, physical method. Uh, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, how to get that data out of your location. Uh, right, and, and I'm going to be showing you running off of the ArcServe appliance, but everything that I'm going to be showing you can be done using your own hardware uh, if that's the route that you, that you want to go. Um, and so uh, hopefully everybody's going to find that informative. Uh, Todd, let's, uh, let's take a look at that, at that next slide here. Um, why would we be thinking about uh, an appliance uh, versus just the, the straight software solution? 
um, a lot of different things, and this is definitely something that we'd love to chat with you about uh, in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, type type situation, right? If you're like me and have uh, a lot of uh, hardware around that uh, maybe you found less need for thanks to virtualization, might not be completely aged, uh, but you, you just don't have a requirement for it. You know, we've moved some items into the cloud, and uh, I've left myself uh, a couple of of uh, beefy servers, not beefy enough to be a host, so I'm not converting them into uh, into a virtual host, um, but don't necessarily want to want to send them out to recycling, um, right? That would be something where I could maybe create my own NAS. Uh, I could have a backup destination using using my own software. Maybe I've already got a pretty significant NAS investment that is still uh, taking care of me and, and meeting my ROI needs. Software only solution might be right for me. Uh, now, if you're in a situation, and a lot of our customers are are in this situation where they're still trying to get off of tape as the first destination and get into that disk to disk. Uh, maybe they're running low on disk space. Uh, maybe they've got a, a, a remote office that they want to take advantage of uh, and uh, and be able to, to protect and, and, uh, and support that way. An appliance might be an ideal solution and it might be somewhere in between an appliance solution and your own recovery point server. So it gives you a lot of capabilities uh, or I should say ArcServe gives you a lot of capabilities. They're not going to force you to, to go one way or the other, and it can definitely be a blended solution. And that's where we've had a lot of success with uh, the ArcServe product line uh, over the past. We've been in business since 2001. We've been an ArcServe partner going back to, to 2003, um, and we've had a lot of success because it's uh, probably one of the most flexible products uh, out there uh, from the beginning and, and still today. Um, all right, uh, what do we got up? Uh, now? Oh, we're actually going to take a look at some technology. Let's do this thing, Todd. That's what I say. Um, I say, let's uh, you know, stop talking and start chalking. Now you're talking. All right, so I should be sharing. Uh, Todd, tell me, can you see my login screen here? I, I can see your login screen. What's the uh, password again? Uh, it's uh, bullet, 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 bullet. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, don't try that, that at a, home. <laughs> that was a test. That was a test. <laughs> you, see, you see if I was going to leak it out there? Yeah. So as you can see, browser-based console here, uh, right? Uh, very uh, very user-friendly to, uh, to be able to log into. Um, if you were uh, running multiple uh, backup appliance, and, and some of our uh, larger customers run uh, independent backup environments. Um, very easy to, to manage and, and control that. Um, I like the, the browser-based interface just from the standpoint of being able to quickly get in here and, and do stuff and, and that kind of thing. So uh, when you first come on or when you're a brand new user, um, right, you're going to have kind of this wizard uh, that's going to that's going to pop up for you, and you can hide that once you get this get this thing rolling. I, I've mainly left this up for, for you guys. And so to get started, I'm going to go ahead and just create a plan. Um, like this is my very first thing here. And uh, I've got a bunch of boxes in here, so I'm actually going to back up my laptop. And I can call this obviously anything that I want. And I'm going to do a Windows-based backup here. And I'm going to add a Windows node. Now, if I'd already installed uh, the uh, the agent on this machine, um, right? I'd be able to just add this uh, add this box. But since I haven't actually deployed it, I'm going to need to deploy the agent as well. And my box is Pink Floyd. This actually needs to be more like that, right? I'm not already using the traditional ArcServe backup product on this. So I'm not going to check this box. This would allow me to, to, to continue to run that traditional product. If maybe I'm already an ArcServe customer, I have those installed, and I want to continue to leverage um, what I've already got going on in that old environment uh, before I fully transition over to my new environment. There's some reasons why I might want to do that, uh, right? So I don't have to worry about, do have to worry about typing stuff incorrectly. We'll just double check that. There we go. Now I have my machine here, and I can add, you know, however many machines that I 
that I want. This is actually just my password manager here, so pay no attention to the man in the window. Did not like my password, apparently. Um, all right, so now I have my first machine in here. I can always come back. Once I build this plan, I can always come back in and add nodes into my plans or add hosts into my plans to back up that whole host. Whatever it is I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose a destination now. I'm going to take advantage of my uh, RDP server, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, RPS server here. Now I can back this up to any location. So even if you're using the appliance, you're not tied to only backing up to the appliance, or if you've built your own RPS server, you're not tied to just using um, that, that RPS server. You can have multiple servers, and there's a lot of reasons to do that. Um, pretty flexible from that standpoint. So I just have the one device here. So I'm just choosing my stuff. Get my password in there, right? And, and that strong password, again, that's my password agent. That's not a function of the, of the appliance here. So it's got a default job. And I can click on this and kind of see now what's going to go on here. So each day, this is going to be an incremental job. It's going to start at 10 PM. Well, maybe I want to do this a little bit, a little bit differently. So I'm going to do a custom job. I still want to do it incremental. I want it to run, though, from a little before I start so I can get uh, anything that's changed on this machine overnight. Not going to worry about the weekend. I'm going to repeat this every one hour. I can go down to every 15 minutes on this if I want to. I can certainly go a lot longer. I typically get out of here uh, 5.30, 5.45, so I'm going to go ahead and do one more backup after I leave. I'm going to change that, though, until 6.30 just for those late days when I might get out of here. And then from 6.30 until 7 a.m., no backups are going to occur. And so now I'm not going to waste any recovery points on time slots where my data hasn't changed. That's a nice new feature in the latest version of, of RDP. In the previous version, um, if you selected every hour or every three hours or whatever, that's going to go 24-7 uh, on that clock. And so now they're allowing you to not waste any recovery points when your business isn't operating. So if you're a 24 by 7 shop, you might want to do that a little bit differently. But if you're working just regular business hours like we are, you might want to customize that so all of your recovery points contain change data. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Uh, now, I also want to get in a full each month. So I'm going to add that in. We're going to kick it off, though, at uh, 11. 30 p.m., and I'm going to do that on the last day. I can customize that however often I want. I'm only going to keep three of those. Go ahead and click Save, and I can keep adding different jobs. So I want to do those incrementals. I want to do a weekly full. It is infinite incremental, so the weekly full, not, re uh, not required at all, or a monthly full, not required at all. This full will probably be something that I export off-site. A lot of different ways you can do it for the way you're operating. Yeah, yeah. So why, right, I'm seeing more and more of our customers take a hard look at an appliance for, you know, their recovery management strategy. Can you talk about or give some insight on some of the, the reasons that they've ended up doing that? Yeah, yeah. So um, there, there's a lot of different reasons. This is really, truly the most common, though. Um, you're getting uh, the software pre-installed on the appliance, and you're getting disk-based location. Now, the added benefit that you're going to get with the ArcServe appliance, so I'm, I'm running my management console here right off the appliance. Now, in a larger environment, you might still want to have a dedicated server that's running this so that that appliance is free for just receiving data, and that's all it's doing, um, right? And so that's a different configuration that we can talk about. Um, the other added benefit that you can get with an ArcServe appliance, though, is being able to take advantage of virtual standby, which we'll talk about in a second. I'm going to give you a quick preview, though. Uh, and what I'm doing here is after this backup job runs, if I enable virtual standby, I'm going to be able to create an offline virtual image on either ESX or Hyper-V hosts. And if I have an outage now, rather than doing a restore, which I can, I can do a bare metal restore, Rather than doing that, or rather than making that my very next move, I can simply navigate to my appliance, 
Here I'm using uh, the 5.9 Hyper-V viewer, right? You can use the built-in Hyper-V tools or your ESX tools or whatever. And I have all of my offline virtual machines right here, and I can simply navigate here and say, oh, my domain controller went down. Maybe this whole host is down where it's installed. I'm going to go ahead and just start that up. And now my recovery time is the time that it takes to boot, and I'm serving this virtual standby machine off of the appliance. So now I'm not bogging down uh, my Hyper-V host, Todd, with additional offline virtual machines, which processor-wise we'd probably be fine on. RAM-wise, we might have to be a little cautious on how we're doing that. Disk space-wise, though, it might cause a problem for me because we're always running low on, on disk. And so now I've got this, yep, I've got this disk space location. I'm running my console off of it, so that saved me a, a little bit of time. I'm running my virtual standby machines off of it if I need to, and no time limit on that. So now I, I'm not going to recommend this, and, and uh, I, I'm not suggesting you do this. If I spin this up, I want to get this back on a production virtual machine. But if it took me two weeks to get that new gear in or get that power supply or whatever the heck it is, um, I'll be able to run this off of here for two weeks if that's what I need to, need to do. And I can come in here and I can customize the RAM and I can customize the, the processor output. So if it turns out, hey, our plan was is to get recovered within 24 hours, but the gear's on back order, or I can't get what I need, or uh, Todd's gone on vacation, I can't get an approval to get that new server, or whatever it is. Um, right? I'd be able to come in there and modify the settings on that so that I've got the juice that I need to take care of my environment until I can actually do what I want to do. Um, right now, you're ready to recover. I spin it up off my virtual standby session. I'm running it there. In the meantime, I'm starting to build my, uh, build my new host. Once I'm ready to go, I can do a, a new backup off of my virtual standby session, redeploy that onto my new gear, shut that down so it goes back into standby mode instead of server mode, and I'm back in, in my uh, regular production environment. The nice thing about virtual standby is the recovery time is the amount of time it takes to boot that machine. It's an exact replica of the machine that you're backing up, so you don't need to go out and, and uh, do any GPO scripts. Uh, you don't need to have everybody log out and log back in. Um, everything is gonna is gonna be working without missing too much of a beat, right? You might have five to ten minutes for that machine to boot. My quickest one boots in about three minutes. Uh, when we were running small business server, that thing would take about eighteen minutes to start up. So that's my recovery time objective. My recovery point objective is down to every fifteen minutes. Now, if we need to go below that, we can talk high availability. And as you can see, it's something, where's my mouse? There we go. It's something that we can take care of right inside of here as well. Okay? So last thing I'm going to do here is I've got my email settings all set up. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I'm deploying the product, right? So I'm going to push out the agent, and I'm going to not reboot this machine because if my box reboots here, uh, I'm going to be hopping off of this demo uh, prematurely. Whoops, went back up to the wrong thing, right? And so now I'm going to... Let me get rid of my go to meeting there. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and it's going to start the it's going to start the task. Now, if I want to come back in and do a virtual standby job here, I actually created that task. I'm going to go ahead and do add task, and then my task type is going to be virtual standby. So now I'm going to do a full BMR backup. Now I can go into that and I can recover a file or recover a folder. If you're backing up an Exchange server get that email message, uh, right, if you want to go down to that, go down to that level. The next step that I can do then is take that, that BMR file and convert it into my offline virtual machine. Actually need to change that. Oh, there we go. I had the right thing. And again, we're using Hyper-V. I'm going to be backing up to the ArcServe appliance here. If I could type while I talk, this would feel a little smoother. But I've already learned uh, about my own limitations as far as typing while I'm talking. Uh, what did I mistype there? Something. Oh, actually, need to have it set that way. There we go. <laughs> we'll figure this out, folks. 
it Arc Server Appliance or just Arc Appliance? It's Arc Appliance. It's my password yep. is what's. I gotcha. Is what's failing. I'm kind of sitting at an angle here. Nah, that's all right. We'll skip on. So then my my uh, virtual machines. Uh, if I'm going host based, I'm going to be able to back up my virtual machines from here. And then my advanced is really just my communication settings, right? And then I'm and then I'm rolling. Once I'm deployed here, now I'm going to be able to see my jobs running here, so I'll be able to see that everything is working. And as I come back over here, I'll be able to see the plans that I've created on my job. So I've got four production plans that I've created. If I click on any one of these, I can see the individual machine or machines that are running in here. If I click on the individual machine, I can see what happened with the last jobs. I can click on the machine and I can see the agent that's actually installed or protecting that guest or physical machine. I can also launch this from the machine. So if I'm uh, uh, inside of a guest uh, or I'm inside of a physical machine and I feel like I need to uh, go ahead and do a uh, backup job before I do a patch, uh, for example, I can uh, right from that machine, I'll be able to launch this console and do a backup now. I'll be able to restore, mount a recovery point, whatever. Pretty easy to do from here. If I wanted to do it right from the console here, I would be able to select any number of machines, all of them, and come down here and go ahead and run a backup job, create a virtual standby job, push out the agent if that's what I need to do. Do a pre-flight check to make sure that everything's going to work the way that I set it. As these jobs are actually running, I'll see a status here that shows shows me when a backup job is running. At any point in time, I can come down to my recovery point server here. So this is the actual appliance now. And I can highlight that. And if I had more than one recovery point server, I would see them all here. I can see how many jobs I have. You can see what kind of deduplication I'm getting, 66% plus 13%. So I'm deduplicating at 70%. Pretty solid, right? Or I'm getting, I'm sorry, uh, I'm deduplicating at 66%. Overall data reduction of 70%. So 3.16 terabytes I'm storing on about uh, less than a terabyte of space. So that's pretty impressive. I can see some stats down here on how much disk space I'm using and how much memory I'm using, right? And so now, I've really got my dedupe set at the highest level. If I'm running out of memory or I'm running out of disk space, I can start doing some tweaks. I can dedupe at a little bit less uh, percentage, which will save me some processing and some hash destination disk space. There's some things that I can do to, uh, to modify how this is working. And how I would do that is basically click here and modify. And now I can start making some tweaks down here if I wanted to. Typically, you're going to want to run this, especially when you're getting started at the most aggressive at the most aggressive pace to be able to get that, right? So that works out pretty solid. If I click on here as well and I have any jobs running, let's actually go ahead and kick off a a backup job here. I can customize the name of this. And I could get one of these servers. I'm getting all four of these virtual machines. And I just got a little note down here telling me that the job had been submitted. We'll see this start to fire up here. I'll be able to monitor all of my jobs running down here. And we'll see it pop up here as those backup jobs start getting fired up. And I'll be able to see where each server's at in process. All right, so here we go. We see the first one's popping up. Kings of Leon is kicking off. Rolling Stones is kicking off. Joan Jett is kicking off. Soundgarden is kicking off. I can click on details to see a little bit more about where we're at and what's going on. On my virtual standby, I can see all the nodes that I'm backing up from here, and I can see any jobs that are running. So these are all the virtual standby. And you, so you can see four of those are on that one host, and then I have another machine that I'm using virtual standby on. Do not have to do virtual standby. Do not have to back up the entire machine. I can choose just specific volumes. Now, if I do that, if I'm not backing up the entire machine, I can't do virtual standby. That has to be the whole machine to build the offline VM. And then I can see what's, what's going on, what's running, 
None of my virtual machines, uh, standby virtual machines are running. All of my sources are running. And so pretty easy to get visibility here, right? Again, very easily see what jobs have run, just the successful ones, which ones failed. Got some reports here that I can run. And you can see I've got a couple of things here. This uh, Server 08 box doesn't uh, communicate the way that I like, so I can acknowledge these, these errors, or I can drill into it and get a little more info on what's going on. And with the virtual standby, I have it set in a manual mode. So if the source machine goes down, I get an email. It'd be just like this, and I can go and investigate before I fire that up. Here I have a networking glitch. So I'm glad that that second machine didn't boot up because the, the actual machine is actually working. So I can validate that. Um, if I'm not worried about that, and I don't have this issue with the rest of my machines, I can actually put that virtual standby into autopilot. So after a minute or two minutes or three minutes, determined by me, uh, if it doesn't detect that source machine, it fires up the virtual standby machine automatically. So I can get that on, on autopilot if I want. You can see some backup trending reports here, node backup status reports, a bunch of different things. And you got some filters up here. I don't know if you guys can see this. My go-to meeting hides it. I've got some filtering over here that I can do. Right, and I can email this out. I can see this information in different ways. Okay, and you can schedule those to run. So give you the information that you need. Something's not working. Drill into the logs. Start finding out what's going on. Right, and you can filter and sort that a couple different ways. So you can really start honing in on what's going on. This configuration tab. Nothing special here. This is really just kind of the meat and bones of uh, what's, what's going on. So here's where you set up your database in a real large environment. You might have a couple of those, of those databases. Um, we've got some uh, storage resource management jobs that will run, which is kind of like data cleanup. How am I going to discover, discover nodes? Uh, how do I want to update uh, the product? Again, if I'm running more than one RPS, I'll probably have a lot of agents out there. I can set one of these boxes up to download the, the updates, and then I'll push them out from there, gives me some capabilities there, create some additional accounts for your uh, coworkers or colleagues or, or whatever. Got some nice help resources here where you can really start figuring out what's going on. Fairly intuitive, I think, for a lot of folks in a, in a base level as far as uh, creating a backup, being able to create a virtual standby, super easy to, to figure out. When you start getting into some things where maybe you want to start replicating your RPS server, so I'm backing up to this box, and then I want to move those backups across the wire to a second RPS server, um, right? then there's some additional configuration that you're going to do so that you can have those boxes connected. And how do you want that data to copy on schedule, in real time, as it's happening? Um, where it's going to be a lot easier to get data off-site is your deduping at the destination. So then we can move that dedupe data across the wire. So again, rather than trying to get you know three over three terabytes uh, across the wire, I'm trying to get a to get a, a a terabyte or less than a terabyte. Now that can be incremental. So to get started, what I can do is uh, what they call a jump start. So I could actually back up my appliance uh, after I get my first full backups done. I can actually back up or seed a USB drive or my second RPS, then physically move that over to my alternate location so that the very first backup that happens over the wire is actually an incremental. Um, right? So a lot of ways you can get started. You can also work with uh, Azure and uh, Amazon. Go ahead, Todd. Question here for you. So is the database on the appliance? or on a dedicated SQL server, or do you choose? Mine, yeah, you choose. Mine is on the appliance. Uh, yep. But again, in a, in, a, in a larger environment where you need more of that disk space to just be holding the, holding the data, um, you might be referencing, or, or maybe you just got a crazy amount of SQL servers that you're not leveraging. Uh, yep. right, right? You can point it to, uh, to that full SQL instance if that's what you want to do. Okay. All right, perfect. Well, uh, thank you for the question. We are uh, two minutes past the bottom of the hour, Pete. So do you have any final thoughts as I uh, take back uh, control? 
thank you for listening to me speak for the last 20 minutes. Really appreciate it. Um, feel free to get on the phone with your productive rep and let's talk about your specific environment. I think I can't emphasize enough uh, how flexible and customizable this is to be able to fit fit your needs. You know, I've, I've actually created way more jobs than I need more for demo. Um, in my environment, though, I could probably get away with just two jobs um, taking care of, of uh, you know, a dozen servers. A lot of folks are just going to need one. Um, but if you need a custom job for every server, boom, we can do it. Hey, what about uh, the range of sizes of this appliance? What, uh, what sizes do they come in? So right now the appliance is going to go up to about 10 terabytes. So anybody above that will be talking about a custom RPS server. And uh, the nice thing there is uh, we can help you with that hardware. But you know, if you're a Dell shop or an HP shop or, or you've already got gear laying around that you want to use, boom, it's done. Yeah, well, that is uh, fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Pete Greco. And thank you to everybody who uh, came to our event today. We know that uh, you had a lot of stuff going on. So 30 minutes uh, spent with us is much appreciated. Uh, your account exec will follow up with you if you want to see and talk more in depth about uh, UDP or the appliance. They would be happy to oblige. And uh, we're loving it. We think it's, uh, it's great technology. Now it's packaged in, uh, in a couple ways, appliance and, and the software, depending on what your need set is. So makes it very flexible for you, which is really the point. Huh? Make it easier t for you to not have to you know, be uh, laboring over your infrastructure, right? That would be the key. So with that, I'm Todd Obert along with Pete Greco from Productive Corporation signing off and wishing you a fantastic day and a balance of your week. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everybody.